Hi guys and girls, animators across the world. Welcome to the first State of Mind for Animators podcast for Spline Bomb. I am here with the uh, inimitable... Uh, I'm not going to pronounce your last name right, probably, but it's Matt. And how do you pronounce your last name? It's Bujaya. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Bujaya. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> my name is Henk Kok. And in case you're wondering, my last name means chef in Dutch. So. Nice. <laughs> Just to uh, keep it, uh, to keep it PG rated right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, state of mind. What is that all about? Um, what we're going to discuss today? There's a. It's a very very broad subject. What we're going to discuss today is the the times when you're feeding in flow, when you're everything rolls your way, your shots going well, your communication is good, life is easy, and and you handle problems with uh, without effort, and you're like, dude, this stuff is pretty easy. And we're going to talk about the times when, and we probably all know those, when the shot's not going well, your day's not going well, life seems pretty hard. And um, we'll explore that as well from a state of mind perspective. And I think this will be very valuable for everyone out there. Um, I've had a few discussions regarding this with other animators. And... I think any animator would like to know the secret to feeling good all the time and kicking, uh, kicking out great shots, and uh, and communicating clearly, and just just move through life as an artist with ease. Um, and the the nice part is is that Matt doesn't know much about this, so he will be providing the perspective of normal people. <laughs> Glad to be considered a normal person. Yeah. And I'll provide the perspective of another normal of another normal person. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is there anything you want to say before we start, uh, uh, Mister Bugaya? Close. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll let you roll with it then. All right. Um, yeah. Um. Rather than me blathering about my experience, I'd, I'd actually love to hear you describe uh, a time when you were like creating kick-ass work. Um, when I was creating kick-ass work, you see, when I create work, I never look back at my work. Um, once it's approved, I never look back. Um, but I would say that when I was studying was the time where I was really focused. It was something completely new that I was doing and super excited about it. Um, after that, after graduation, I worked on a few short films, which were very exciting, but you kind of don't learn much. So then you start feeling a bit crap because you're working alone at home on a short film for the first time and you have no idea what you're doing. Um, I'd say I moved to London and started working on a TV show. Um, that was very hard because, you know, you're in a and studying and then you're moving into proper production, doing shitloads of animation every week compared to what you were doing before. Um, so you feel like you just can't do the job anymore. But halfway through that show, I got the flow, managed to figure out how I should organize my workflow. And then my shots started looking good. Um, after that, I worked on a few other shows, and then I moved to to Germany to work on another production. And I think that was actually the best work I've created. Um, we, I think, what it what it was was they never gave us deadlines on like, look, you need to do X amount of frames a week. You're allocated shots, so you don't have that pressure of frames per week, um, and you can just focus on your shots. Um, I think the, also the huge motivation on the shots was that I was working with people who moved on my same team. Everyone was an animator. No one was your boss or whatnot. We're a team of 20 animators. People came from all over the place. They came from Weta Digital, Sony, and all 
films you can think of. So they stepped the bar up, so you need to reach it. And I think because everyone was so easy on the show, it helps everyone creates really nice work. Um, and I think that's when I was really in the flow, just animating and really loving what I was doing. If that makes any sense. Yeah, man, totally. Um... I just basically explained my my life as an animator. <laughs> that's pretty good, actually. So you also you pretty much answered both questions. You've answered uh, the the flow times and the not flow times in one go. Yeah, because I think even when you're in the flow, sometimes you just get that really bad day, and you're like, okay, I just can't do it. So sometimes it's, you're better off just going home, sleeping it off, and coming back to work and producing kick-ass work. <laughs> rather than having to redo what you did the previous day. I think it's something not just animators, but just creative people in general go through. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm just processing what you just said, because you, you, you talked about like your whole life as an animator in one go. <laughs> Which is amazing. So I didn't mean to just throw everything out as one big chunk. No, I like it. That's just perfect. Um... You see, I think um, being in the zone as well is like um, when you when you start your first job, whatever a show it is, because most of us um, get on projects just for three to six months or maybe a year if you work in TV, I think. Um, so you're always in a new environment every time. You need to prove that you can do the job because there's thousands of people applying for the same jobs. You get the job and you want to prove they did not make a mistake hiring you. So I think you always have that huge high when you start a new job. Yeah. And then pressure kicks in at the halfway through production or at the end. Um, things might get a bit complicated, it's time to move on again. So I think there's a lot going through um, people's minds from half the production to the end where it's like you need to see where you're going to work next. You're going to see where you have to move to, see if you have enough money to survive till you get the next gig. So I think that's a lot of bad vibes and distractions that we don't need. But unfortunately, it's in the system. Let me ask you a question. Um, I guess this is this is in general is called grounding. That's basically your understanding of how the mind works. And um, so, so rather than explaining it, let's let's explore it because that's much more fun. Um, so you've talked about a lot of different occasions about when you're on a show, and when you are in the beginning of a show or at the middle, at the end, um, and you talked about all the, all the things around it, the, the deadline, the pressure, the focus, or the, uh, the easy people around you, and no deadlines, and um, the, the niceness of having so many, uh, so many talented people around you. Um, The, the longer that I've, that I've been seeing this, the more that I see that when, when I'm in the moment, like when I'm sitting behind my computer, there is only one thing, and that is creating work. And so, and even smaller, it's this pose. Or it might be even smaller, it's this controller that I'm animating right now. And everything else around me is just... It's just thought. It's just an idea in your head, right? Mm hmm Yeah. And so, for me, the two, th the two are, th are, well, it's the same experience, but the two are separate in a way that um, how good my shot is going to be has very little to do with the outside influence. Um, 
There's of course a reality that a shot needs to be done in a certain time and maybe if there's no deadline you have more time to create a great shot. Um, but even there, for me, there's been times that I've been, that I had like, I was working on my own stuff and I had like practically infinite time to create a good shot. I'd be working on uh, maybe a 10 second shot, like a really nice acting shot and would have maybe two months full time to, to get it right. And on other times I had a shot that I, that I just wanted to kick out in a week or in like in a couple of days. And the funny thing is that the quality of the shot was not defined by the time that was available to it. I found that really strange. Like, why wouldn't the shot get better if you take a, like, a year to work on it? How is that possible? <clears throat> and why is it that... When you are like you did the, the, the time you described in Germany, where you did where you described you did your best work, you mentioned a couple of things, like there's no deadline. Okay, well in a way, no deadline is in like you're assigned shots, so you know you have a certain amount to do shots. So you're not thinking in frames, you're thinking in shots. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to stop you there. No, that's cool. I kind of like the silence because it gives a little bit of time to um, to to process what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, the thing, the point that I was trying to make is that the the things that you mentioned, which was there wasn't a like a a, a frame like a quota, um, there was less pressure and there was more focus. These are these are basically your thoughts, right? They're they're your thinking. Yeah, this is being completely open. <laughs> What what do you mean by that? Like um it's literally the way I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so the other things when when things were going really well, um you you talked about like you're working with like people from, from Weta and other, other places, so these guys are probably pretty pretty experienced. And for some reason you describe them stepping up as raising the bar, as in that's a good thing. Um, I guess to some people they could describe that as there were these amazing guys and I had so much trouble trying to get to that level. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm what I'm pointing to is um, you're thinking is can be really distracting let's 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 uh, let's take it back a, a, a little simpler so the moment you're in your shot all the outside influence doesn't really matter right so if there's a um <laughs> i'm struggling with this one that's fun because <laughs> i'm trying to make a point what it's i'm like i'm circling around it <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just take it to my experience because I'm trying to explain a point from your perspective <clears throat> um, um, in a way when, the, when my thinking is really strong like I have a lot of thinking going on I get distracted, and when I get distracted, it's easier to to lose uh, to lose focus. Um, and when I lose focus, I try harder to not get distracted. And um, the more I try that, the less the less I'm actually watching my shot. The less I'm actually aware of what I'm doing. Um, and so it's almost like my thinking runs away with my ability to animate. Right, and so some days I sit down and um, it's like, okay, I gotta get this shot right. I gotta get it on time. It's gotta be good. Um, I gotta do this. I gotta do that. These things are all thought, and they are all distracting. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and I see that in what in what you do, you mentioned as well. Like there's like it's hard work. There's lots of stuff to do. I need to do um, I need to do many things. Um, and in a way you are 
at that time busy with your thinking. You're like, oh, these thoughts, they are, they seem real almost. And it almost sounds like you need to fix your state of mind in order to get back to work. And the, the longer I've been with this, the more clearly I see that none of that is really true. And I guess to the listeners right now that might seem like, well, there's deadlines, those are true, sure. But the moment you are moving a controller, you're not, you're, you're, the deadline is not of that much of an influence. You are focused on the pose, the silhouette, and you're looking at your work. Um, I wonder how that sounds to you, if that makes any sense or if that, that causes a lot of confusion or... No, I think it makes a lot of sense. I tend to think, overthink um, a lot. I think that's one thing I'm trying to work on because same, I don't know, this might just be off topic, but same as when it comes to music, I can't work while listening to music or I can't work when people are talking behind me because I can't be in the zone. Um, for me, being in the zone is I'm literally zoning out everything that's happening and all I can think of is what's happening on my shot. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's uh, that I recognize that completely and I think uh, most people, if not all people out there, have had such experiences that you're just completely connected to what you're doing and you're in the matrix yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and you're you have superpowers and <laughs> yeah and at the end of the day you're like holy shit did i do this shot <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um the 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 things you just described as in i i can't listen to music um or i can't i can't be in the flow when other people are talking um that is your thinking, right? Mm -hmm. That statement is your thinking. Yeah. What would that mean for you? My thinking? Yeah. Maybe I should stop thinking when there's people around me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then I have some good news and some bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Cut out the part of my brain which thinks about what's happening around me. Okay, so the good news first. <laughs> you you are you are perfectly fine as every person is. <laughs> yeah, that's so, save me all the bills of um seeing a psyche. Yep. No need to do well if you feel like it if you think it's fun, but yeah, you're you are you are perfectly fine as every human being is perfectly fine. <laughs> um the bad news is you you cannot stop your thinking. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> um, but I have some more good news though good good I, I'm glad it didn't end on the bad news <laughs> your, uh, your thinking is not a problem um, um, so let's, let's recap that one because it, it's really uh because it's really powerful, and, and like so, you are you are basically you know you can get in the flow. You've been there, so you know you have experienced that you are. There's a really good version of you out there, right? On on so, yeah. And so so there exists. Can you pronounce your last name properly once more? Bujaya. Okay. So there is a a master Matt Bujaya out there. The guy who's moved effortlessly through life. So that guy exists sometimes, right? Just, yeah, just like there's an excellent version of Hancock out there who is amazing and moves through life without, without effort and who is completely sane and can handle quite a bit more than the other version. Secondly, so the bad news is there's going to be thinking always. There's always thinking. If you aren't thinking, you're you're pretty much a plant. <laughs> and I, I don't know about you, but that's not. I have my ambition slightly higher than being a plant. Yeah, completely. Yeah. So that's a good thing. So thinking is actually not that bad. It's not. It's not that much of a problem. Um, 
And so we get to the juiciest piece, and that is... Oh, I lost it. <laughs> uh, and, and the, nice, the nice part is that your thinking is not your problem. The, the challenge here is um, raising your understanding of how your mind works to the point that when you are in the experience of, I need to get this deadline. So when you are deep in the experience of, I'm not feeling it, I can't work when other people are talking, I can't listen to music when I... That is your thinking. You are actually hearing your own thoughts. And um, if you take those for granted, if you truly believe that that's real, you are indeed in trouble. You will, you will not be able to, to get back to work because it seems as if those guys out there are distracting you. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the first time I heard that, I thought that's total bullshit. Thank you. Goodbye. We're done here. Let's move on. <laughs> that's nonsense that's complete bullshit <laughs> and after a while I could see it for 10% I could see for 10% of the occasions that okay that's not true it is indeed my experience that's stopping me from, from creating great work right and so because in sometimes you are in the flow and people will be still be talking and you might not even hear them because you are in the flow right yeah that's a very good point That's a so so. That's beautiful that you're seeing that actually. That's a pretty bad <laughs> that's a, time. You're either in the zone or you're not, I guess. Yeah, but when you're in the zone, somehow all the other stuff doesn't seem that important. And when you're not in the zone, all the little things seem really annoying. Yeah. That's interesting, right? Because the thing that I'm saying here—that's your thinking. So, so let's take it back a little, um, make it a little more tangible, make it a little less spiritual and ethereal and, and hard to get. Um, <clears throat> um, just taking up an, a really nice example for, for, for uh, So basically what you're thinking is, is a warning, uh, it's feedback. So when I'm, when I'm angry, um, and I'm trying to, to think of a time when I was really, really, really pissed off or felt a really strong emotion, or when I'm, or scared might even be a good one. Um, do you have any experience, do you have, well you sure have experience with being angry or, or afraid or happy. Uh, could you give an example when you were uh, very uncomfortable with something? Hmm. Extremely uncomfortable or very distressed or not liking something at all? Uh, I can't think of much right now. I think because it's so early in the morning. But That's your thinking, by the way. <laughs> 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 what it actually... That's a great example. That's perfect. So, so right now... Um, you are not experiencing any distress or you're pretty comfortable, right? I guess so. <clears throat> so that's, I, I, I guess that's, uh, that's, actually, that's actually state of mind. So right now you're feeling, you're thinking, and your thinking is pretty calm and relaxed. And so your mind says, we're good. We're pretty good. We are doing fine. Yeah. So right now, in this moment... You could state that you are probably, if you had to make a hard decision, you'd be making, you'd be a pretty good version of Matt Bujaya. <laughs> I'm going to practice this one, it's embarrassing. <laughs> you have to write it down a thousand times and read it out loud. <laughs> I got one for you, that's your thinking as well. <laughs> so, so back to the topic, that is actually your thinking, right? So right now you've, you're feeling your thinking and your thinking is calm yeah, and you, you, your judgment goals are really good. So you are a very, you, you can trust yourself pretty much with your judgments in this moment. Um, and so, um, did, you, did you by chance run into an, a nice example of when you were feeling a little uncomfortable or a little distressed or, or 
Uh, um, you see, right now I'm moving house. Like I was telling you, I'm moving from Ireland to the UK. So yeah. there's a lot going on. Moving job, moving house, finding a new house, selling all the crap, giving away all the crap. Yeah. So there's a lot going on right now. Um, I think this would be the extreme of any experience I think most people would have, where they have yeah. to move literally not just house, but country um, for work. Um, yeah, that's a great example. And, and I heard you. Um, How about yourself? I've got an, a, a similar example. But it, and it's going to illustrate my point. It's about when I woke up and found out that my flight was not leaving in four hours, but in two, and I still had, <laughs> and I still had to pack. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so let's let's dissect these two. So in this case, you're right now. You are describing your experience of moving pretty relaxed. Your your, your thoughts are still a little uncomfortable with it. Right, you're so you're still saying like this is a pretty stressful experience, but right now your state of mind is pretty cool. Yeah, you see, I I in the last four years I moved one two. I think I moved six times. So yeah, I think you become immune to moving. <laughs> I think I became a traveler. That's An immigration traveler. This is gonna. If this it sounds annoying to you, please tell me. But the thing I'm hearing, yes, you have more experience with it. <laughs> That's truly true. I truly believe that that it's easier for you now because you know what you have to do. It's already known territory, right? Exactly. Um, but even that is still your thinking. Your thinking says, we know this. And so you know you're going to be okay. Yeah, it always works out, I guess. Well, it might not, but... but <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to think that though. <laughs> yeah, and that might, that's not going to work because you can't control your thinking. Your thinking is just going to come and go. Um, I think at one point when you realize that you're probably going to be okay, even if you can see a little glimpse of that, and you look to your past experiences, and you, like on some level you know you're going to be okay, and on some level you know there's a really good version out there of you, um, it, it creates a deep feeling of trust. Like, okay, I can pretty much handle a lot of things and I don't. I perhaps do not need to, to think about what might happen. I'll see it when I get there. Mm -hmm. And uh, to tie that back to the example that I'm going to give right now, um, um, actually I actually have another example. I used to work for a pretty big game company uh, in Amsterdam and it was my first job and it was... I was really lucky to get there and really happy to be there and exceptionally intimidated by working as a first job on a, on a, like a super high budget triple A game and I felt extremely uncomfortable for a long time and I somehow was not I was I was sinking basically and I didn't know why um, and so in the end I lost that job and and I didn't like it at all, um, but that happened, and and uh, I wish I had done better. But but that's just the way it went. And I think what what was not what was one of the reasons that I that really wasn't helping me perform at my best at the time was that I was taking my my thoughts of discomfort and anxiety very seriously. Hmm. So I'd feel a little uncomfortable waking up, then I'd feel a little more uncomfortable traveling to work then I'd be a little more uncomfortable when I had something to do. And then I'd feel even more uncomfortable when I had to had a problem. And so my thinking was just building and building and building to the point that it started pretty much affecting how well I slept, how well I communicated with others, how much fun I was having. And so my thinking became real, basically. You could, right, at some point I probably gained some weight and I didn't feel so good and I, I didn't do much social stuff because I was working harder and... So life, life seemed pretty hard. Um, and at the time, when, I, when, the, when the job ended, when, I, when, I, uh, when they told me we're gonna, not going to renew your contract, I was actually kind of relieved. It's like, okay, I'm actually happy that I don't have to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I felt like 
damn it man this was this was cool I really like this place um, and um, to give the other example after learning about state of mind and getting a deeper pretty much a deeper understanding of um, how my how a lot of these how, like I don't see this a hundred percent of the time but in most cases I see my own thinking I'm aware that my thinking creates my experience and um, and so when I woke up like I had to travel to on holiday to uh, to Rome and I had remembered that my flight was at 12 and so I figured I'm just gonna go to bed and wake up and I'm gonna pack slowly and I'm gonna travel there I'm gonna have a wonderful time I'm gonna have some coffee it's gonna be amazing and that's my thinking right and I'm feeling great and I think I got this in the bag and so I go to bed and I sleep really well which I never do before uh, traveling because I felt pretty good right my state of mind was pretty clear um, and luckily for some reason I wake up at 7 instead of 9 I had set my my, my uh, alarm clock at 9 I wake up at 7 for some reason and for some reason I have the clarity of mind to check my ticket <laughs> the first thing I did when I was lying in bed I thought let's check my ticket so I do god it's leaving in 2 hours and I have to be there 1 hour in advance <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to, I'm going to go up now. I'm going to skip the shower. I don't have time for that. I'm not going to get, get breakfast. I don't have time for that either. You're strong to the airports and your PJs. <laughs> yeah. Well, as, as close as I could, could get that. But I just knew like this are the, these are the steps that I need to take. Breakfast, don't have time for it. Going to skip it. Fine. Shower. Well, I showered last night, so I can probably live with that one as well. Packing? Well, I'm not going to take that much with me anyway, so I'm just taking the bare essentials. So I packed in like, I think I was out of the house in 20 minutes, and I didn't forget my passport. And oh, yeah. I, walked I walked to the, the tram, tram, and I actually had the clarity of mind to... There was a person wa run, walking towards me, and it was my old teacher. It was an old teacher of mine, and I even had the clarity of mind to say hi to her. Hi, how are you doing? She said, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm missing my plane, so I got to go. <laughs> and... Um, and then eventually, eventually I, 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 I arrived, arrived at the, the airport, airport and, and I guess I, I was a little uncomfortable, but it wasn't, wasn't a big, big freak, freak out at all. all. And, and I, I knew, knew that, that had I believed my thinking, thinking like, like, oh my god, god I'm going to miss my plane, plane. Um, I'm probably going to screw this up. And uh, like you create a whole story in that moment, right? And I had those thoughts, they were going to come anyway. And... Um, I pretty much took them as a signal, like, okay, right now, pay attention, pay attention and take good action. And so I knew that one of my, the first thought was like, I'm going to miss my plane. I didn't take that thought serious. I thought, well, we'll see about it. What can I do to fix that? And so it's like a huge, huge red warning light when your thinking goes into overdrive. Mm. It's like a huge red warning light. And so I knew not to take the warning light as my experience, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But I guess we all experience the, the warning lights too often, I guess. Well, we don't listen to it. You're just like, my God, the warning light is here. My world is going to go down. It's, it's so big and red and I'm in such trouble right now. And then you create more thinking and you take it. Right? We, we totally get caught up in it. Yeah, uh, it's a good example you're giving. Yesterday um, afternoon, myself and my wife were looking at apartments where to live in London. Yeah. And literally, I think I passed the overdrive where I'm like, oh my God, there's nowhere to live. <laughs> <laughs> I would literally just said, okay, we've seen enough and just closing down everything. Yeah. yeah get back to humans rather than just about to explode like we're like oh my god this is just not gonna work but yeah I guess you need to know when you reach that um, the limit I'm curious what did you do after you uh, after you noticed that it wasn't gonna work strangely enough um, I started editing my demo reel <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I have no idea why I started doing it because I don't need to send my demo reel anywhere. Yeah. Um, and then I stayed watching my animation on Spline Bomb for lo on loop. Yeah. I think I went, I lost it a bit there. And then I think we went to have a coffee. Great. And we haven't so looked at its properties again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you so so you did two things. You did you caught the rod you like you knew you were at your limit, right? Yeah. And you then proceeded to do something else, right? And you didn't prob you pro probably didn't think much about the properties. Did you take any action yet regarding uh, housing? Um, no, we're just waiting now. Okay. Okay. We might live in a tent for a few months. <laughs> so you're great. So you're thinking in alternatives already. You're already yeah. <laughs> or like, a caravan. It might be warmer. Yeah, but so 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 you did like, uh, which is pretty much innate. Everybody has, like, at some point you realize that if you do do more thinking or more panicking, that it's not going to help you, and so you back away naturally. Yeah. So how did you move on from the whole job thing? Like you kind of hated it, but loved it at the same time from what I understand. Like you, you kind of really liked the place, but there was something going on in work that must have made you so uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah it was, I, I, can I, can see now, I can see now that like I was working with motion capture at the time and when I came in, I thought motion capture is beneath me. I don't like it at all. And so I was like, I'm not going to do motion capture. I'm way, way too good for that. Which was, mind you, my thinking, right? Because after a while, I was moved to cinematics. I thought, cool, cinematics. Um, but that involved basically moving locators in space and putting the assets down. And there was a creative part of that that was amazing, right? So I have some cinematics in a really big production that I that I helped do the camera work for. So I, that was actually really good. But my thinking around the time was like, I really do not like moving objects in space. I don't, I don't have any connection to it. And so my thinking around it was like, right, I'm not setting keys. I'm not making progress as an animator. And so my experience of creating amazing cinematics for a huge budget production was really terrible. Ah, uh, yeah, that does suck if you think you're moving into your dream job and, um, you're kind of already hating it before because you know there's mocap because it's funny like i don't want to talk about mocap because i've never done it but whenever he's people say oh yeah that's all mocap i think it's something animators have in mind it's like fuck that i'm not doing mocap i am a keyframe animator yeah so moving into something like that doesn't help already with that if you're in that state of mind but then you're like yes i'm moving into the next department which then turned out to be worse those are your thoughts. That's your thinking. And I can tell the, the point I'm actually, I'm, I'm almost done with that story, but there's one really big point. I wasn't seeing my thinking right then, like how I had like uh, a really strong assumptions about mocap. As soon as I was doing <coughs> cinematics, so I was hardly touching mocap anymore. I thought mocap is actually pretty cool. I like mocap better than doing this. And so, <laughs> but I, <laughs> But when, I, when I got a piece of mocap, I was like, fuck yeah, cool, mocap. <laughs> so, so, I, <laughs> so my experience of doing mocap completely changed based on my thinking because I was like, well, at least I get to work with keys. How cool is that? <laughs> and that is, that is your thinking as well. Right. And so even now, later, I can look back at, at the cinematics and I thought well sure yeah no yeah of course I'm like moving moving objects around and, and setting them in a space and all that that's not the most fun job but really that's not true I was creating cinematics and, and and creating experience for somebody and and there was a lot of creativity involved in that mm -hmm. right I, I mean there's people out there who hate this hate the craft editor yeah I've been one of that person, and and I, my my relationship to the graph editor changed changes based on my thinking. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel they're not being artistic because they're using the graph editor, but then I, I guess I work 
every shot's different. So sometimes Gravitator saves my life. Sometimes I just don't want to look at it. Yeah. But it's funny how you mentioned uh, this is like a big roller coaster of highs of highs and lows. So you go into a job super excited and you hate it. Yeah. yeah. Promoted to the next department, you're super high and excited, and you're like, "Oh, this is worse." <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny right now, but if you're in the situation and you're like hating everything about it, it's not funny. Yeah, you can't work, and I think that's. I mean, you haven't finished your your story yet, but I think that's how. I think it's hard to get back into this into the state of mind of working when. Nothing's working in a way where you think yeah. it's going to be good and it's not good and you're happy to move and it's just even worse than it was. So it's like, how do you get into the zone then? Okay. So, um, I guess you go and get your contract renewed and then you're like, Oh crap, that was a good place. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got uh, a little bit of help for that one. Um, and, um, I forgot the other point. So, the thing, that, the, the thing with state of mind is this, you don't need to handle it. And that's a hard one to see. Um, but um, once you know that when your mind is clear, you find really good solutions, you know that when your mind is not clear, your solutions are going to suck, basically. Um, that's one thing, right? And there's a whole book written about it from the perspective of sports. Uh, it's called Still Power, and it's a splendid book that basically says whenever you're feeling terrible, like don't trust your decisions, right? Mm. And so you might want to get a cup of coffee, but you, but and that's the, that's the thing that I forgot that I actually wanted to say is that when you're feeling really bad, um, um, your next thought could change your state of mind. Okay. Um, for example, if I'm talking with you, can you see that, by the way? Yeah, no, it's really um, very interesting, actually, because you don't think about this stuff to yeah. hear someone saying it. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm basically trying. I guess if, if an animator would see that, that the next thought could change your state of mind and there's no need to 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 do much with state of mind you're you're like it's super simple but you're there that's all you need basically so you you also mentioned that um if you're in in a bad state you should not listen to your kind of current thoughts because it might be not a good idea so how would you describe that to your next thought then what do you mean? Your next thought? Yeah. So that's the warning light. So when you know that you're in a bad state of mind, your state of mind is actually perfect. You're just getting a warning signal. And the warning signal says, don't trust your thinking right now. The thing you're thinking about, you're not seeing it with any clarity at all. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I know I got that. Yeah. So it's with you, good yeah. Good to get up and start trying screens around. Yeah. You should think twice. <laughs> well, actually, you should know that it's an extremely strong warning signal, and you've probably <laughs> been ignoring it for like 15 times already, if not 100. <laughs> yeah. Like you're getting the mother of all warning signals that says, like, change something. This is not working. You need to change something. Yeah. Or, or back off. Or, or, all right. And so that make, brings me to the, to the most and the nicest point of this. Um, what I said a bit earlier is that you are already pretty healthy and your state of mind is actually working perfectly. Even when you're completely in anger, in pain, uh, not in the flow, completely lost and not happy, your next, your next thought could like, change that completely. Um, and the funny thing is, is when you start seeing this, you start getting the red lights, you, you're more aware, you become more sensitive to your red lights, like when you're angry or, or, or distressed or, right? You get, you, you're catching on earlier and earlier and earlier. And at some point, like I did with my plane, like I wake up, oh, big anxiety spike right there, really big one. But I didn't get anxious because I, I knew 
okay, there's, okay, now it's time to take action. And so I did. And I, I figured, well, I might not get my plane, but I mean, once you have a, like, once you are, once you get the, the catch the, the red light early enough, you realize you're going to be okay regardless. I mean, even if I, like, you, you can suddenly see that missing that plane is not going to be the end of your life. Mm. I mean, it was a plane for going on holiday. And so you have that clarity of mind and you already start thinking for alternatives. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think even just outside the, outside of the creative thing, like even if you're waiting for the train or whatever, like I remember waiting for the underground to get to work and um, you see people almost killing each other to ke- get onto the tube when yeah. there's one in 20 seconds. So they're not realizing that, okay, why am I running over people when there's one every 20 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> but then they still have time to go in and queue half an hour to get a coffee. Yeah. Um, I used to just sit there and watch the people fight to get on, and then I get onto the empty one. Yeah, funny, huh? I, that's, I, mean, it's ter- <laughs> I mean, it's terrible for these people because they're in serious, they are truly in pain. They are truly having a horrible experience, and they're not aware that there are. Like they're literally feeding their thinking and their thoughts say, well, warning light, let's put it up that way. Yeah. Big warning light. The, the thing you're about to do, the reason you're scrambling is because you believe that you need to get on that train. And once you say that, well, well, it's actually not that big of a deal. Suddenly your experience changes and then you, you look with it from clarity and you start looking for alternatives. Yeah. So I think we've, we've arrived at a really nice place right now. Yeah, I was just going to say that. <clears throat> and we are now, well, I got a call twice, so my recording is a little messed up. <laughs> we'll find <laughs> out if this recording actually worked and if people are listening to it. Congrats, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to add or, or say to the, uh, before um, I, we uh, wrap it up? I think this was really good. Um, I hope the viewers enjoy this as much as I did. Um, what I'm thinking is maybe how would you conclude this first kind of uh, state of mind podcast? And what do you uh, think we should move on to for the next one? Uh, actually, I'd, I'd be, I'd be curious what people are thinking. I'd like to, I'd like to um, get more uh, from the listeners so anybody who's listening right now please if you have any idea or maybe in a day or two anything strikes you you want to learn more about this or you want something different or you have any ideas at all um, contact either Matt or me um, you can contact on Spline Bomb we are both on Facebook uh, Spline Bomb has a Twitter account um, there's the comments underneath as well ah great yeah and yeah and we will we will, we will check those out and um, we'll pick it up and record the next one based on what you guys think. Yeah, that would be really good. I mean, because we can be sitting here in bliss talking about our experience, but the more we interact with, with guys and girls out there, like who are like facing a deadline or, or, or having experiences or have a say in this, that's going to make it so much better for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, brilliant. Um... So I guess this could be is um, we don't really have a structure right now. Like it's not going to be every week, every month, whatever. I kind of I think we'll just work on the flow kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm not gonna I, like nobody with the whole state of mind thing has ex- has done much exploring in the worlds of art. They have in the world of sports for years, but with art, I don't think anybody's done this. Mm-hmm. So. so- Let's explore it. And, and if anybody out there wants to interact or take part, let us know. Yeah, what we could do as well is when we when we post this at the bottom, we could maybe add a few links of books maybe you read, what's recommended. Um, just if people are looking for to, to look further into this topic. Yeah. Cool. Brilliant. So we make this part of the recording? Because I like this discussion. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we're going to... So guys, this is a goodbye. We're going to keep talking, but we're going to stop recording now, or at least we're going to cut that as part later. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Hank. Thanks, okay. guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>